Hey VC, what's up? Uh, I wasn't planning on doing a video today, but I just read last night that producer Keith Olsen had died. And uh, so I just wanted to do a little tribute to him. Um, he was actually the guy that discovered uh, Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks and produced their self-titled uh, debut album and also went on to produce the self-titled Fleetwood Mac album after... He joined, they joined um, them. So, um, you know, he's mostly known for 70s, 80s rock, went into more arena rock, even some uh, hard rock and metal later on. You know, I don't think he's one of those acclaimed producers like Bob Ezrin or George Martin, someone like that. But he definitely had a lot of big albums. Um I would say his style of production was more, it, he definitely gave bands a big, huge sound, but not so much where it was like over the top tracks, like say Mutt Lang with Def Leppard. Um, but I just went through to see what recordings I had real quick. I'm sure this is not all of them, but um, there's some of them that he did. The, of course, the 87 White Snake album was a huge album at the time. Scorpion's Crazy World. Pretty good album. It came out in 1990. Probably the last really good Scorpion's album. Probably their last one that was a pretty big hit too. Um, Lynch Mob. It was just George Lynch's band after Dokken. Ironic, I just picked this up last week. This is The Babies, Union Jacks. Pretty good album. Sammy Hagar, Three Lockbox. Uh, Pat Benatar, Crimes of Passion. He also did uh, Rick Springfield, um, Chicago, Loverboy. So he had a lot of music. He did a lot of music that a lot of people would consider on the cheesy side or, you know, corporate arena rock, but still had a... Uh, big hand and a lot of big hits but the main reason i'm doing the video is because you know it's a shame that bands don't use producers like they used to i know it's very inexpensive to make albums these days especially if you have a home studio but i think a lot of these newer albums from classic bands are just missing that uh producer's touch and i guess it's because a lot of these producers demand a pretty high fee for producing their albums. Um, you know, it, it's it's not that new albums sound bad, but, you know, uh, some of these bands, like For The Who, for example, uh, their last album, you know, how can an album in 1975 be, sound better that something was produced in 2019? It's just, I don't think the, they're taking the time to really work on the songs and all that. I don't know. It's just my opinion. Um, but it's just a shame because as as a lot of, you know, our rock heroes are dying, the producers are dying also. And then a lot of times they're a lot, you know, at least a few years older than, than the bands they produced. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know who, if there's a younger generation of great producers out there that are producing bands. Um, I know Rick Rubin is a lot younger than... Um, some of the classic producers like Bob Ezrin and you know I know it used to be that too when you heard about a band was getting produced by a certain producer you'd be like oh wow I can't wait to hear that you know and even though it wasn't a great album when I heard that uh, Bob Ezrin was working with Alice Cooper again on the sequel to Welcome to My Nightmare I was pretty excited about it um, so you don't get that nowadays when you know bands are just coming out with an album and you figure ah oh, it's just going to be okay or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. Um, should have another video up sometime this week. Um, if not, we'll have a nice week.